And we're back with another Black Window Cream podcast. I'm your host, Ben Haggerty, a.k.a. Ben Real vs. World. You're probably wondering what Black Window Cream stands for. Black Window Cream is a content creator group fueled by caffeine, or at least I take my coffee Black Window Cream, but you can drink whatever the fuck caffeine you want to drink and still be a part of our group. We're a private creator group on Facebook, open to creators of all kinds, a.k.a. if you make videos, if you're a photographer, if you do marketing management, editing, dancing, whatever the fuck you think is creative, you're all welcome. Our private group has been growing rapidly. We have a shit ton of members working together by sharing content, asking for feedback, passing tips and tricks along to one another with the goal of pushing each other to become the best motherfucking content creators on earth. And you can join the group if you want by going to blackwithnocream.com slash join. We'd love to fucking have you. Please join. Today I have one of my longest friends on the podcast, which is tight. His name is Tim Dodd, better known as the Everyday Astronaut. Yep. You heard his alias correct. It is the Everyday Astronaut. So Tim is from my hometown in Iowa and has been one of the most successful wedding photographers in our state. He recently retired that to pursue a character that he created only a few years ago known as the Everyday Astronaut. His character has grown a huge following and has had millions of views on his photo series all around the world. Tim and I dive into the importance of investing into your dreams, how photography has allowed Tim to travel to over 25 countries, and his most recent theories on building brands from the ground up. This shit's pretty tight. If you're interested in supporting Black Window Cream, please go to blackwindowcream.com slash merch. We have hats, shirts, stickers, pins, and shit. It's all on the store. Just go there, check it out. I appreciate anyone who picks up some merch. If you don't have the funds, I totally get it. There is another way that you can support. Obviously, share the link with the podcast to as many people as you possibly can but please hop on itunes and leave me a review every review helps i'm looking for feedback on how i can make this thing better i appreciate it if you do that speaking of reviews let's announce the winner from last week's podcast contest if you listen to last week's episode in the beginning i said if you leave a review on the black window cream podcast using the hashtag bwnc forever and had the best review i was gonna lace you up with some black window cream merch i loved all the submissions But my favorite one goes to this dude, Hayden Walker. Hayden said, the podcast is lit. If you are into anything creative, the podcast is perfect for you. If not, you should listen anyway. Ben is dope and truly cares about giving back to the Black Window Cream community. And anyone who is looking to further their creative career and the people he has brought onto his podcast are incredible creators and truly inspiring in their rise to fame. Hashtag BWNC forever. You win. Hit me up. I'm going to send you some shit. But yeah, that's it. Uh, Enjoy the work week. Keep creating. Make sure to tune in every Sunday for a new Black Window Cream episode. And without further ado, I bring to you my interview with Tim and the most epic podcast intro ever created on earth right motherfucking now. Attention. If you stop this podcast recording at any time, you will die. I don't want to die. Do you want to live? Yeah. You have 24 hours to share this podcast with five people or you will die. I'm kidding. You won't die. You're just weak shit for not sharing. And the winner of the best motherfucking podcast goes to... Goes to... Black with no cream. What do you think? It's so fucking dumb and so fucking Ben Haggerty. I knew you would say that. <sighs> so we're back. I don't know what podcast number this would be, but um, we're live and well in Cedar Falls, Iowa. I'm back here for my sister's wedding, and just so happens that my friend, one of my very good old motherfucking friends, Timothy Dodd, lives here. Yes, sir. Better known as the Everyday Astronaut. That's true. Tim, can you introduce yourself? Well, you halfway, I mean, you pretty much said it. Uh, I'm Tim Dodd. I'm better known as the Everyday Astronaut, and uh, Everyday Astronaut is a uh, online persona of me gallivanting around in an old Russian spacesuit. Uh, it started off as kind of an art project, and it turned rogue, and now has become a vessel of science communication and spaceflight advocacy. It's the most interesting thing to have grown, w- living as your friend, to have grown and witnessed. <laughs> because let's all right. So Tim is an insane photographer. Let's go back to that. Um, he is one of the reasons I started doing video because I remember you always had video cameras when we would go to shows back yeah. in the day and I always wanted a video camera. <laughs> um, so we'll get into all that, but Tim's a great photographer. He's traveled all around the world, has photos blasted all over every fucking network possible. Um, like what? CNN and other shit, right? Yeah. Yahoo, I, CNN, all those yeah. types of things. Yeah. Um, his photos are crazy. He works with SpaceX now, kind of on and off shooting photos for the launches. I don't know if it's like directly with them, but you shoot rocket yeah. ships. Uh, an, an accredited 
Space flight photographer, yeah, with spaceflightnow.com. And so more recently, and this is why I think it's fun to have, I mean, just in general, Tim's life is interesting, it's creative, and that's what I like to talk to people about on this Black Window Cream podcast. But more interestingly, Tim just quit his job as a professional photographer, shooting fucking tons of weddings all summer long and traveling all over the place shooting content. He quit that to take over this online persona known as the Everyday Astronaut. Which yeah. is you took when did you go full time? January. Yeah, I had dedicated 2017. Really, is kind of what my wife and I both agreed to. <laughs> so Tim gets married. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> quits his job, yeah. and takes on just he goes after a hunch, which all started as a joke. So we'll get to that. But what I want to dive into first is let's. I want to go back. So yeah. every time I talk to someone, I want it to be like a deep dive into who you are, like how you grew up what it was that got you into this creative world that you live in. Yeah. Because I feel like it's all in us. Sometimes you have to find a way to be tapped into Mm -hmm. it. And if there's someone listening to this, you know, I want them to kind of have a tool. I want, I want to take some sort of tools from this, but yeah, I want to hear like when you started off growing up and you were in school, I knew you used to draw a shit ton and you were involved in music. So let's hear that. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, I, I growing up, I was that kid that way too late in life would still have a drawing pad at restaurants. Like literally I remember I probably even through high school, I would take a drawing pad and pencil with me to every sit down restaurant we ever went to ever. And it was just totally normal for me to be sitting at the table drawing, like head down drawing. Um, now it's, like, now it's kids on iPads playing yeah, fucking ex- games. Exactly. Um, tomato, tomato really. But, uh, you know, my, my parents fostered that in me a lot and really, uh, encouraged me, you know, they'd buy me drawing pads and, and, you know, kept me up to date with that no matter what. Mm. Um, they're very cool about that. My dad helped teach me how to draw. You know, I remember him teaching me perspective and like, I remember actually we were in Kentucky. I was in second grade. We were sitting at a table, uh, outside of a, a car show and there was hot rods. And that was my first like big time falling in love with cars was at this hot rod show. And my dad was teaching me how to draw cars in 3d. I'll never forget that. You know, he's teaching me lines of perspective and everything. And, What's um, his background? Was his background in drawing? No, he's. I mean, he's an engineer. Yeah. Um, he worked for John Deere Tractors for thirty-five years, um, and he's artistic. You know, he's he. I he builds bikes. Like yeah. he does all this cool stuff. Is he's super artistic, but like in a very practical way. My dad's a very like engineering mindset. Right, right. Very practical, um, but very talented. And I, I, it would be very interesting in another life if he had like pursued full-time creative on on some form. You know, like what that would have looked like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he definitely fostered uh, and, and would teach me a lot of things about about um, drawing. And what's funny is actually also around second grade. So I would draw a lot. I mean, drawing was my, my kindergarten teacher came to my parents, you know, first thing. She's just like, I can't believe this kid can draw like this. You know, that was like the only thing my conferences ever were, were drawing, basically. Second grade, my second grade teacher, uh, Mrs. Van Hemert. I, I need to say that. Damn, you remember her name? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. go on. This She was cool, man. Here's the deal. Um I'd be sitting there drawing in class, you know, like while she was teaching or whatever. And I think most teachers, you know, you'd maybe do, slap on the wrist and say, stop drawing, you know, stop doodling. She noticed that like, as long as I was drawing, I was still engaged and still answering questions, still listening to her stories. And she would actually give me a pen and paper to make sure that I was still doing that while she was teaching. Huh? It seems super anti, uh, anti-productive almost you know it seems like very backwards from what a normal teacher would think yeah they always tell you stop yeah stop taking around you know and she she, again she like absolutely encouraged that and that's huge that's tight and and she realized that i wasn't distracted as a matter of fact i was probably more focused if i had a a drawing pad and pencil in front of me damn you know it was really cool. I still I see her out and about around town. I always give her a hug and say like, "See, that's what I like is that you can still have a chance to like, be like you did this, <laughs> you did this." Because a lot of teachers, I think, have a, they struggle because they they obviously are always probably hated. Everyone yeah. always hates them because yeah. they just are the worst person in the world. But there's very few that I think really strike a chord with certain people, and then that changes their life forever. But they might not know that for a fucking twenty years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is humbling i guess for them to have that in passing yeah. like at an art festival or some shit right exactly exactly so you're drawing all the time and you're growing i mean is this ever weird like for other kids around you i think so yeah i mean because did you play sports i played some sports you know i played soccer and, and did cross country and things you know and it's not a, 
it's never like a cool thing to be the kid that's like good at drawing. You know, that's never like your cool trait in school. Right. Like you got the cool kids that do cool things. And drawing's never really going to be up there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You can't win, like, track jackets or whatever. <laughs> right. All that like shit. All-star yeah. drawing, drawing competition. <laughs> you it's know, like that's chess. not really a thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I really realize that, you know, I think schools are so lined up to teach you that you need to do um, a career, like a, a traditional job career. Like, a here, you have to learn how to run Excel because you're going right. to have to do spreadsheets. You're going to have to learn how to do this. But they forget to often say, like, I know I know art teachers always say, but art teachers almost think, like, kid, you're never going to make it as an artist. Art's just, like, a creative outlet it's fun to do. But they forget. Why the fuck are you here, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fuck? Like, but no one really tells you that, hey, actually being a creative is, is going to be a huge industry, and it, it's going to be probably one of the only things that doesn't get taken over by automation. Ever. You know? like, right. Like, 100%. Yeah. That's and creepy. It, yeah. It's weird to think about. But, you know, at the same time, like, yeah, I think I realized sometime in high school slash college that I could make money by being creative through videography and photography. It started off in videos, and I hated doing that. Yeah. Back in the day, I had to, to, this tells how old I am. I'm 32 years old, and I can I can remember the days where you had to take a mini DV tape and record one-to-one yep. back on your computer. It took forever. It took forever to offload that shit. And then your computer couldn't even play back. It no. had to like render every clip mm-hmm. and then it was still playing back. Off. Like editing a video was a nightmare back I, then. Which I remember because I, so me and Tim also grew up in music. So yeah. when I was, I moved to Cedar Falls from a town called Waterloo, which is about 15 minutes from each other. Yeah. And when I moved there, I had no friends. And there was a kid that lived next door to me, Matt Schmitz, and he had a band. And they would practice in their basement at his parents' house. And I would I would always hear it, and I, I would go over there. And they were all playing their music, and I thought that was so sick. And then I went and saw one of their shows, and they were like a hardcore band. I saw these kids like fighting each other and all this <laughs> shit, and it was just like the coolest thing I've ever seen. And as I started going to more shows because of that, Tim would be there filming with his camera or have his camera or making some sort of video. And it was like the sick-ass like skater-looking cameras. And I was like, damn, I want that. Yeah. What is that? And then I'd remember the time you told me video sucks. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? And you was like, video sucks. That's why I'm doing photos. And I'm like, I don't agree. I'm like, okay. But that now way into life, I'm like, damn, I really wish I could just do photos if I didn't have to fucking offload all this media and edit all the media. But so, okay. So you get into photography, videography, and you're a musician. You play drums in a band called Safie for the <laughs> longest time, which was like his claim to fame in this town. Uh, you've gone on to play, I mean, you've played, you still play music with people. Here, not with people, off, but I still write But sometimes music, you yeah. play, you know, you like hop in with like a band in Kansas or something right. like that and play drums. It's for been something. a few years, but yeah. yeah. Anymore, it's pretty much just writing music in my office now, you know. But by high school, you're full on drawing yeah. video photography nerd playing not music. photography yet in high school yet. actually the video thing for me happened just outside of high school oh so you just finished high school then. yeah okay I, and because you ben for those of you listening ben's four years younger than me so your experience of me and you like yeah, when you yeah, in high true, school true, was true. probably me was like, you getting done with high school exactly true. yep so um i didn't really dabble in that stuff until college and then i made the investment of buying uh, a video camera yeah like in 2004 but because you thought you could make money with it, yeah. That, that oh, was yeah. Goal? It was a business. It was a business decision, and I just wanted. I really wanted one, like to to make funny videos. Right. Because I used to do that with my parents, like VHS tapes too. You know. Same. Everyone did. You know. But not so did, so, what but. was your market? What were you thinking about for you were going to make videos of what weddings? <laughs> yeah, weddings. I just saw. Right that. then, you already saw that there was a market to make yeah. videos. It was it was for me a way to pay back on the gear. Mm. You know, like I knew that I. I, I just did the math. Like, hey, if I can charge four hundred bucks a wedding, I can pay off all this gear in five weddings. Right. And then I have free gear, basically, and yeah. I can do whatever I want, you know. Um, but it obviously, you, you start seeing stars in your eyes when you realize, oh, you can make 1500 per mm-hmm. wedding. And then with photography, it was even more than that. You know, with photography, it started off, um, you know, you make 800 or or $1,000 a wedding, and by the end, I was making $3,600 right. a wedding, you know, or yeah. f- base 3600 right. up to like five grand a wedding, you yeah. know, and... Yeah, it's hard to walk away from that. Fuck yeah. I mean, that's a steady <laughs> great check. And yeah. then you still have your weekdays open as exactly. long as you're not editing the whole yeah. time. But like, so, yeah. okay, cool. So you see, you're starting to see money come from production. And yeah. so you're investing into that. You do video right. for a little bit. Yep. How long is it 
until then, like at that point, you're starting to see. Well, first, how are you getting your clients? So people, I, I love yeah, that yeah. people listening to this are there. They have these questions. There's yeah. people that are brand new to creating Absolutely. content. They might be in this exact yeah. same. Yeah, and boat. even if it's not videos, I think there's still people that are trying to get in with some sort of uh, b- building a business in yep. one short yep. way. Yep, I would say the number one thing that the lesson you can learn from, like how to, you know, I just bought this camera. Now what do I do? Mm-hmm. Start shooting. Start shooting people for free. Start shooting your friends. Shoot a family video. Shoot random crap for free. You know, get your name out there. And before you know it, uh, you know, at first, the first year is always like, you know, uh, grinding your teeth, so to speak. You know, like you're, you're like going to be doing stuff for basically free or very, very cheap. You're having to undercut people because you don't have the portfolio yet, you know. Oh, my whole life out in LA. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's everything. Everywhere, man. Everywhere. Unless you're like Even if you get out of fish, college, you have pound, to go do you know? an internship and work for free. You have to do all yes. this. It's always like, well, let's put you to work. Let's see yep. what you can do. It's climbing the ladder, just a different ladder. And it's the attitude I think you take into that because you have to understand how important that piece is of the right. puzzle. Like to yeah. build it out properly, if you really give your all at that point, yeah. you're gonna it's going to come back tenfold. And and it's it's a humbling experience you know you might be like i'm gonna be the best real ever but no one cares right. until you've done it long enough to actually show that yeah you're really good at this right and you might be great obviously you know i i believe in anyone that that thinks that you know mm. you're but you got to put your dues in you know in a sense so you can either do it under somebody else or you're gonna do it on your own you know was it Remember that time where you had to make like a wedding or not a video, it was a video for a church or something and you guys were going to do, there's this thing in this church that pretty much everyone of my friends went to, um, was a, uh, caravan. That's what it's called. Oh, right? right. Right. So caravan is like this thing where everyone goes out and, um, goes out to like a, a, a city or a state somewhere and they travel in like three tour buses and they go out there and they try to help out a community or some something like that. Tim it's, did it all the time. I've never gone. It's It was more like a, a just giant party. Just a super party. Yeah. So they all would go, but I remember we had to make a video or someone was making a video. Was yeah, it you making year, the video? There's always like a yearly or like a recap video but the, thing. Do, this is when we had Taylor's moped, right? Did you do that where we pushed the- Oh, I don't- what? That was like a promo for- We did a promo video yeah, for Caravan. For, yeah. And this is like, this is the, me seeing what we could make with film. Like right, I was like, holy right. shit, this is so tight. We took, uh, <laughs> we made some promo. I don't even know if I saw it, but we took a moped out of the back of our friend's truck that was like no longer working. And we drove really fast in the country at night and <laughs> threw it out just because, I don't know why. And we, you were like filming it and just like hanging out the window <laughs> filming it. And like, we were like, yeah, anything to get the shot. And that was like the first- those are some of the key moments for me. I'm like, this is fucking fun, right? Like, I remember hanging out the window of the truck, yep. and Taylor went down into the ditch to turn around. And we almost rolled. And we almost, literally almost rolled. Like, when I, you know, yeah. Yeah, we almost rolled the and fucking I was, truck. I was out the window where <laughs> if it had rolled, I would only be a top half of Hell me. Yeah. There would be no bottom, oh Tim. Oh, my God. They'd only be the top of Tim. These are like crucial moments, but I loved it because me and Tim also later on created a video. I think I was a freshman. Oh, no. Or, no, yeah, no. I was a f- senior in high school. Don't maybe. talk about So we did this contest for Apple. No. These are, this, but this was fun. Like yeah. This is us learning how to do this shit. Apple did this so really bad. dope film festival where they did a 24 or 48-hour film festival. 24 hour. And so you had 24 hours to like take these little key things that they offered. Like, they had you keywords. Have, yeah, like keywords. You so you had keywords like birdcage, I think was one of yeah. them. And you have park to use bench. park bench and certain things like that. And you have to make a film a certain amount of time in 24 hours. So we had access to our local university's film cameras through one of my friends, Marcus, who rented the camera. Yeah. And so we all like used the camera and we put a team together and we all went and shot it. But you could win. The prizes were sick. At the time, <laughs> you could win four MacBook Pros, I yep. think. All coming with full Final Cut suites back when Final yeah. Cut 7 was a thing, which was crazy. That's yeah. thousands, fucking tons of money. Yeah, it was like four grand or five grand each or each. something. And so we shot this thing called Darwin Goes to College. And then Tim was the main actor. No, Robert. Rob, Robin. Robin goes to college. So Robin Goes to College is this fucking, I'll put it in the show notes. I think there's probably a link on YouTube. It's the yeah. fucking worst thing it you'll ever worst. watch. It's a, We made a musical. <laughs> For some reason, we decided to go even more ham and make a music video or a musical where Tim is Robin. Robin goes to college. Robin's this outcast and he just sings and dances, does high kicks and fucking leaps. And we actually like ran in front of a, it was homecoming and we ran in front of the marching band during the parade. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, these are all little things that we did where it was just, there was no benefit besides like, that was like, oh, we could win a contest, which would have been cool. We could have got free shit. But other than that, it was like, 
just filming for fun. We yeah, threw that yeah, truck. Absolutely. It was all just for fun and trying things yeah. and learning and getting out and experiencing. So when yeah. we go back to you talking about if you get a camera, shoot. Yeah. Shoot fucking everything. Everything. That's yeah. fucking super crucial. Edit everything. Like learn your from your mistakes, you know, and like realize, ah, you know, I shot this at F two and now it's so shallow up the field you can't see what's going on in the background, you know, like yeah. Like make those mistakes. You For know? sure. So you get into photography at what point then after videos? Uh, so videos kind of paid. I use that almost as a vessel to pay for the little bit of college that I kind of attended and failed out of a few times. Yeah, because you didn't go. <laughs> I just, More than a couple. You tried college a couple times. I tried times. college. I gave, it a, I gave the old college try about five times, I think. And so let's just all point this out. Tim tried college, didn't go to finish it or whatever. And I'm right now I'm in his fucking amazing house in Iowa that him and his wife own. And it's the sickest house. He's got the dopest room for his YouTube setup. He's got like all of his camera gear, his edit bay in there. It's so sick. So I mean, you don't got to go. <laughs> you don't got to go to college. I have get. people ask me this a lot on YouTube is like, what's your background? Or like, what would you go to school for? And I have to tell them like, I do have to be very cautious and saying, I didn't go to school and be optimistic about it because I still had to put the work in. You know what I mean? Hell like, yeah. Like you, add, it's just a different type of work, right. you know. Um, I did not do very well in the academic setting. I just Me way either. too ADD, way too like all over the place. Drawing on your pad, drawing on my pad, you know, Fuck. and yeah, and then playing video games. Like mm-hmm. obviously got vastly in the way of, of any productivity, right? Through throughout college, but yeah, but I used video to pay for that portion of my life. So I was doing well. The video production it it company paid for that you college, created. yeah. yeah. And, wow. and rent, you know, like during that time. I didn't always have rent because I lived at my parents' house for two years yeah. or whatever. And then, um, but when I did, when I eventually decided I'm done, I got a two year degree after like five years in and out of college. Um, I ended up, uh, that's when I, I worked at a, at a video store or a, a photography store for a year. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. For almost exactly one year. And it sucked dick. Why? It just sucked. I remember dude. you always had the plug. Like, you'd always get like cheaper shit or you yeah. could print your film for. Oh, I used it to my you advantage. Could print man. And do all I the... used it to my advantage. I got loaded up on gear yep. at wholesale. Yep. Uh, you know, it sucked though. Like, be, mostly because at this time I was so used to, like, I'm going somewhere for the weekend. I'm going here. I, I love to travel. I would travel all the time. And, the, and then, like, especially in the summers when my friends were still in school. You know, like you guys would still be, like you guys would be out doing fun stuff and I'd be stuck working a nine to five. Right. It ruined me. Yeah. I was just like, this is the, w- I can't do this. Yeah. You know? Fuck that. And, and he would make me work like every weekend, even though weekends were terrible. He'd have like five or six people, five people staffed and like some weekends, eight people would walk through the door. Right. And it just, it was just insane. Yeah. So that was my time to be like, okay, I'm going to just try doing photography, you know, like full time. Oh, so because you worked at the photography yeah. store, that's what. Started, I thought you were shooting photos before that. As like kind of for fun, but not really as like a oh, means yeah. of income okay, cool. at all. Um, and the first thing that I realized I could actually make, I shot some senior pictures and stuff. You know right, what I mean? Right, like I did yeah. some things just totally like under the table, like super just like, hey, Tim, you, we like your photography. Take yeah, yeah. Her or picture. you do video and they just assume you do photography. They're like, oh, that's cool. Kind of. But, I, but the, at this point, I had stopped video. Okay, word. I was sick of weddings. Right. And, and I equated my hate for wedding videos to my hate of weddings, I thought it like, or I thought it, <laughs> I thought I did. <laughs> I thought I did that. Uh, I thought like weddings sucked, and really, what I hated at the time was shooting weddings on r- r- videos. Yeah. Um, for a multitude of reasons. Number one was uh, the time it took to edit those things with the mini DV and all that oh stuff sucked God. so bad. Yeah. It'd be ten times easier today. Right. Um. But the other reason for me, and it's not an ego thing, was that you're number two to the photographer. Mm. And it wasn't, it's, again, it's not an ego thing that like, oh, I just can't be number two. It was the fact that if the photographer was doing awkward stuff with the clients, doing awkward poses, doing super stiff, like dumb stuff, my video was awkward and stiff. Right, right. You need you know? to direct that. Yeah. And I, the, the videographer, especially back in those days, like you're just a guy with a camera basically on a tripod. You're not seen as like a, a videographer or a you yeah, know, yeah. cinema photographer. Right, right. With it, fucking movies and all yeah. this shit doing drone no, shit. No, nowadays it's a little more equal. The playing field's a little more equal in that world. But back then it was very much like, no, 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 no. Don't get in our way. Right. Like you just shoot over our shoulder and it sucked. So I had friends begging me to do their wedding, right? Uh, for for photos. They're mm-hmm. like, Tim, we really, we just don't have much of a budget, you know? And to me, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try it once for you guys. You're friends of mine. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be able to make a quick 500 bucks mm-hmm. or whatever. Like it should be super easy. And I shot a wedding on, on photos 
and it turned out I at the time it's it's awful. It's so bad now, <laughs> like looking at it. Uh, but at the time, I thought it was great. You know, I thought I was really happy. They were really happy, and immediately their friends then were like, "Hey, can you please shoot our wedding?" And they begged me too. I was like, well, and I raised my price. I'm like, you know, maybe if I can get like 800 bucks, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. I'll do it again. Right. And I made 800 bucks. And then another one. And it just kept going. And I just kept raising my price, you know. And are your photos improving? Are you like starting yeah, to learn yeah. some shit? Pretty like, quickly, actually. I think it only took me about two or three weddings and then buying new gear yeah, yeah, yeah. to really be like, oh, okay. You know, and I, I got into a stride rather quickly, I think. And this is while you're at that photography store. So I was still, I did about two weddings. And then I told myself, once I have... Uh, I don't remember if it was 10, five or 10 weddings booked. I'm going to quit because that'll be enough. That'll perpetuate. You know, you do five, you'll get 10 more out of it, you know, right, right. and the money I'd be able to, you know, whatever I'd, I'd make it happen. Right. And my mom thought I was crazy. My dad, my parents, we had this big, you know, yelling fight. You can't quit your job before you have like another job. I'm like, but the money's coming in. And they're like, not really. You're going to make less money than you did at the photo store, you know? And, and I'm like, but I can't start a business and like be pushing photography if I'm working 40 hours a week. Right. No shit. I'm like, I got to make this a full-time job. I just got to hit the ground running. And they, uh, you know, I quit in Mar- like late February, early March, something like that, 2008 or maybe 2009. Um, and I didn't really have a gig for like three months. I didn't have a wedding for another three months. Fuck. And you know, they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, It'll all work out. Yeah, I just yeah. bought a house too, not this one, but my old house, remember? <laughs> yeah. And like I had bills to pay, you know, but I just knew I needed to actually start making that a full-time job, advertising and like shooting other stuff right. because it perpetuates, you know, as as you make happy clients, you make new clients, you know, and it, it just grows so quickly. And so it, it, took a, it took a little while before that started kicking Yeah, I had about two months of kind of awkward transitional period, but it... Um, by the end of the year, I think that year I ended up making more money already in that first year than I did the year before at the at the photo store. So sick, you know, just by diving in, you know, you just got to jump in. So okay, so then maybe maybe not that first year. Maybe the first year, I maybe made technically less by a little bit. Right, right. But you but were then, buying shit. You had to buy gear. Exactly. You were paying and investing yeah. into your business. And by the next year, it had like doubled. Already. Yeah, yeah. So it paid off by far in the long Super. run. Okay, you know? so you so you start figuring that out. You're crushing it. The next six years or photog- like full-time yeah Tim full time photography through tw- from 2009 for sure i know 2009 i was for sure full-time until 2016 was my last year so yeah so then you go Seven and just years. shoot everything he's you've traveled all over the fucking world a majority of that i know you traveled a bunch just because you wanted to travel a yeah. bunch and his landscape photography is insane but you traveled to, how many places have you gone for weddings uh internationally two in Ethiopia funnily funny enough which two different weird. clients two different totally different clients totally un, don't Ethiopia, know each other what the fuck the I shot one and then that those pictures apparently there's not very good SEO results for Ethiopian wedding <laughs> uh, yeah. so that actually led to a ton of other Ethiopian weddings but only one other in Ethiopia wow um and then uh one in Germany too but then a bunch of other places yeah. in the United States yeah so you've you've traveled all over the place and then you started getting a lot of notoriety on on uh your work with that through our friend Taylor you got some stuff yep. from all the photos that you took of our friend he was like yep. a war veteran and then you find this fucking spacesuit I know yeah. we're, we're pat surpassing stuff, but I mean, your career was yeah. amazing. You crushed it. You, but like you said, I guess let's go back to noting because people always also are asking uh, in Black Window Cream, they're constantly talking about ch- charging, right? Pricing your, yep. you, and you said like, okay, I don't really want to do this, but if I change the price to three hundred dollars more than last time, maybe it'll make it worth it this and time. That's what you got to do. It's it's a it's a it's a debate you got to play with yourself, and a movie you got to make is it, obviously the great thing about being creative is if you can make more money doing the same amount of work. That's, that's the, the best. best situation. The like, best situation. Of course. That's what the whole goal is. And if you're growing and your portfolio is doing better and your demand's going up, all you have to do is slide your your pricing to the right a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. and it will weed out some of those inquiries. It'll weed out some of that stuff automatically, but it can keep you at that same busy level while making more money. Right. It's awesome. 100%. <laughs> and, I, it's, and if you're too busy, raise your price. Right. There's a solution. Yeah. Don't work harder work smarter yeah you know, raise, smarter for raise sure. your price that's really all there is to it i remember um so when i was in 
let me think getting out of high school into college I, in college i think i did valet and and stuff mm-hmm. out at park place event yep, center yep. so i worked at an event center tim would shoot f- weddings out at that yeah. event center oh, yeah. and we i did valet and set up for the shit and so that's what i would just do all the time yeah. during school and as i started getting into the idea of making more music and i wanted to take less like the same thing with you i wanted to quit my job and yep. not fucking do it again and i wanted to just like make enough money to pay the bills I didn't know about pricing either. And that was like the hardest thing. So yeah. the first time you start off, how much do you charge hourly to do, you know, this and this? I'd be like, uh, $20 an hour. Right. And then I'm like, fuck, I just made $20 an hour at the event center. I was only getting paid like $12 an right. hour. You know what I mean? And yeah. So you go up, but I remember even looking at like, cause you study what everyone else does and you were already crushing it. And I would go to your website and it'd be like, this is what I charge for this. I'm like, okay, so if Tim charges that, I'm not near as good as that. I'll charge half right now and see if I can do it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And it was just, does that work? And someone would be like, yeah, here you go. And yep. then you, you figure out your rates that way. But I think that is, you're totally right, is you need to decide what it, what your time's worth, what your salary yep. is worth, mm-hmm. if you want to look at it in that way. Because the hardest part is if you're freelance, you're your own boss, and people also look at you like it's not real. Like what you do isn't real. Because, <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I mean, in yeah. a weird way. Definitely. So for someone to try to figure it out, like how much should I charge for this? Man, if you're going to take this freelance route, like what is it going to take for you to do one of those yeah. times X to decide what your yearly salary is yeah. and then go for that. If that's like what you want to do, yeah. how do you do that? But I think you're right. It just, it, it, especially if you start getting a shit ton of work, why yeah. not raise your prices? That's like the oh, best yeah. time to do it. I, the big thing would be like definitely set goals to, to make more money than the year before, no matter what, mm-hmm. just obviously like as a no brainer, but also make sure that you're not working that much more either. It's, it's important to put the grind in, when it's necessary. Right. But at some point in your career, it's okay to kind of coast a little bit and, Mm -hmm. and make, and keep raising your price. And, and, you know, like just finding that balance between how much, what's worth for you to work, like how much time and not to get burned out with it, you know, because it's easy to book. You can get greedy and get big eyes and go, I could make $180,000 this year. All I have to do is shoot, uh, you know, almost every single weekend, but four weekends. Right. And you're like, that's not worth it. The no. quality of life. Like, yeah. Give yourself a quality of life. Raise your price. So you're not doing that, and shoot the stuff you want to do. Mm. You know, like at some point you get to be choosy. You get to be picky and say, yeah. like, I'm I'm over that. Like, right. you know, a couple. It was probably four years ago I stopped shooting senior pictures. Right. You know, and that sounds funny now. Like, like oh, stop shooting, like, duh, or whatever. I don't, and I don't even know the people listening to this. They might not even know what senior pictures are. Yeah, I guess if you guys don't know, like when you're in high school and you become a senior in high school, <laughs> in our school this, at least. Yeah, you get this awkward like photo, photo session. It's like the weirdest photo shoot and you just take a photos of you like at a, a fucking buy a train set or something <laughs> like. <laughs> and then and then your mom pays a shit ton of money yeah. for it and then you hand those out to your friends yeah. and like you just try to get all the hot chicks pictures or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. But, like, you collect them. Yeah, and they look great. And you stand in front of a brick wall <laughs> with yeah, a pole. Yeah, with the polo too. Like yeah. shit, you don't even like. No. I took it with Rob Clausen, and he walked around, and we took these pictures where I'm wearing like a white beater and like a fucking <laughs> my, my snowboarding backpack, and my mom got them. They're all black and white too. Yeah. Like really on film, he made them look really cool. Yeah. And she was so mad because she's like, "What is this? I'm not gonna give this to grandma." Like, well, what the fuck you mean? That's what I look like That's every what I day. Look like every day, mom. you're wearing this polo, and you're gonna go sit by the river. And I'm like, God <laughs> damn it! But that was it. Like so. Anyway, senior pictures, huge market there. Yeah, huge I mean, market, think about that. Every senior is in high school. Cool. Yeah, so you're taking all these kids' pictures, but to be able to wean off that, and that's probably gotta be a good source of income. If you like, it's a decent hundred bucks income. for yeah. an hour and a half worth of work, maybe five or six hundred bucks an hour, five or six hundred yeah. bucks. Yeah, so yeah. you go out, make six hundred bucks in a few, like two yeah. hours, probably max. Yeah, whatever your hourly yep. setup was. But okay, so so you so okay, this is my favorite part, Tim. Then were you drunk? <laughs> no, actually. So Tim was not drunk <laughs> <laughs> on eBay or some sort of site and finds this Russian spacesuit. And I know you've explained this shit a million times, no, so I'll fine. I'll brief through it. So he finds a spacesuit, he puts a bid on there, which I thought this whole time he was drunk. He wasn't. No, I was at a coffee shop, so I was very oh, so caffeinated. He, so yeah, so he wasn't even he had was the he was just sitting there, yeah, <laughs> focused on so he sees this spacesuit, buys the shit. Which I always knew Tim was fucking like into space and whatnot, but I never knew Tim really knew about space and shit. Like I didn't know you knew about. At this point, shit. I only kind of did. But it's crazy how weirdly you got became obsessed with it. Yeah. All right, so Tim <laughs> Tim puts a, a bid in, and like later on finds out he wins this fucking Russian spacesuit. Yeah, and it shit gets shipped to his house. It's real, yeah. and he gets it. it. Has a helmet, the tube thing, so you can breathe. Yeah, a full body suit. 
Do it have shoes or or what do you wear? No, it just has those like footy things, and I just put boots on. Yeah, so he's got. <laughs> so Tim gets. You know, I better tell this part of the story. Go for it. So this thing, I, I'm so excited. I'm alone at my house. I rip into this box. The thing smells terrible, but I don't care. I, who who? Where is it from? Where is it coming from? It came from the. It's a website called RR Auction, and okay. the suit just smells bad because it's like rubber and like people sweat in it. You know, it's just a gross thing. It's like. Just nasty. Did it really get to space? No, it's it's a high altitude flight suit. It's probably like a MIG mm. fighter jet. There's a chance, I don't know, maybe someone like shot someone in it or something. Right, that's it's kind of cool. creepy. Or they pissed themselves. I don't know. Turn up. All the above. <laughs> so what happened <laughs> is uh, I get super stoked, th- dive into this box, d- immediately throw the suit on, you know? And then it has one of those neck rings that you see in the movies, you know, a yeah. really tight, like rubber neck ring. I slide it down over my stupid head. That hurts for the first time, especially. And then, of course, the next thing is you put on the helmet, right? And the helmet has this like weird, really hard to figure out locking mechanism. Right. And so, it took me a while of fumbling around. Oh my god! You're alone in your room. I'm in your alone house. in my living room. Okay. And I finally click it into place. And as I celebrate the victory, I immediately hit a, a very large moment of panic because I realize How it's sealed, fuck? and I can't breathe. Oh my god! And it's physically clenched around my neck. Yo, if you killed neck. yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. This if you was... killed yourself in a space, you know, so, trip. <laughs> so imagine I already had like, immediately had this like, prema- the flash of my premature obituary. You oh, know, like yeah. idiot dies alone in space suit. Dude. <laughs> in living room. Should have never given that guy internet. <laughs> this is why the internet yeah. needs to be banned. Dude, fuck. <laughs> so what happens? So uh, I end up... Uh, yeah, after as I'm panicking, I'm trying to undo it, but it has this latch system that, you know, without practice, you don't know what it, it, it goes like backwards. They get to like pull this thing first and then like unlatch it. So I didn't know any of that. So I'm like panicking. And luckily, I, f- I look down at the tube because I know it has a tube. So you should be able to breathe through the tube, right? That's where the All oxygen right. comes through. And there's a plug at the end of it. So that's the first thing it is. Unplugged it. Air returned to my face. I didn't die. Oh, my God. I'm still panicking, half hyperventilating, and it took me another minute to figure out how to unlock the thing. So, yeah, when we were talking about not going to school, definitely go to school if you're ever <laughs> trying to fly to space because they'll at least teach you where the fucking tubes at you are. <laughs> how many other people do you think died at home? In none. Their none. Oh, you Zero were, because people are t- smart enough. Yeah, I was going to say, but well, you're a smart guy, too. That's what's <laughs> fucked up about all this. All right, so anyway, Tim gets his spacesuit. It's yeah. funny. Ha, ha, ha. He gets a spacesuit. I go to Redbox. In it? Yeah. Like, to when. This this will date it. I went to a red box, and that was like the funny thing I did for the day. And then it just sat around for about five months. <laughs> <laughs> but mind you, I, st- I came just came home from LA, and red box still exists at like every fucking gas station. <laughs> so it's still a thing. Oh, I don't know why you're trying to date it. It's still here. I don't know. Okay, so Tim, so he doesn't Not use it for a while. Box and chill. But he go. So Tim, let's go back to. He's a great photographer. He's creative. He's also a Photoshop whiz and makes great content. So Tim goes out and takes these photos of himself in this astronaut suit. It's not that simple. I, I mean, what's the brief? What's the good? Want to know what happened? Yeah, okay. I, I, it took me a while. I, it took me until I realized how the timelines lined up. Uh, I, I it's it literally kind of haunted me in the house. I had it hung up in the corner of the house, and I'd like turn the corner and be like, "Oh shit." And like forget that it's there because it just looks creepy. What it's on a stand? You have it standing I, I, up. I bought like this like mount oh thing. Oh my god! And mounted it in the corner of the room. It's terrifying. No, I remember that at your yeah. house by the TV. Yeah. Was it over in that area? Uh, no, no, it was in that the like living or the like dining room thing. Like where you keep all your camera gear? Yeah. Oh yeah. I had I it hanging like, up there. You would see it in the corner of your eye. Yeah, it's and like it'd be fucking creepy as shit. Freaky. It just so, looks like someone's hanging there. So it's there. And then go on. So uh, I didn't really have a, like a plan for it. It just sat there. And what happened is I got asked to go shoot my first launch at Kennedy Space Center. And I worked on, there's a company here in Iowa where they make parts for these m- rocket moving things, you know, down at, at NASA. And their company was going down and they hired me as the photographer Okay. to go. And there, there was going to be a launch, you know, and they're like, hey, you know, we'll pay you, blah, 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 fly you out here. I'm like, awesome. And of course, I'm like, I better get, you know, a, a press credential so I can actually like set up cameras around the rocket and all this stuff. So I... I make that happen for the first time, and I'm going down there to Kennedy Space Center to shoot my first launch. And of course, I like, you know, I kind of ask my Florida. friends. That's in Florida. Yeah, it's in Florida. Okay. Yeah. And I ask my friends, I'm like, gosh, should I bring the spacesuit? You mm-hmm. know? And I'm like, yeah, of course I should. I have to, right? Yes. And so I took it with me. Uh, 
it ended up that for whatever reason scheduling because the rocket got delayed a whole bunch the people i ended up going separate from the company and just was there to see like the rocket in the end of the day and i rent this uh i got like a free upgrade to a corvette for some reason so i'm driving around kennedy space center in this corvette with like a spacesuit in the trunk and i'm so excited and uh what happened is i went to kennedy space center visitor complex and put the suit on Shot around there for a bit. Like what? You put your camera on a tripod? Yeah, and just yeah tripod. I had lines of people wanting to get their picture with me because they thought it was part of the attraction. Oh, my God. Meanwhile, it's 85 degrees, and I'm, like, sweating to death, all this stuff. I hated it. And By yourself. By myself. I literally, like, swore I'm never getting in the spacesuit again in the Florida heat. And then immediately after that, went and took another picture <laughs> where I had to, like, run 100 feet to get this one shot. Oh, my God. So stupid. But anyway, all this said, I kind of got this, like, I got – the biggest lows and highs visiting Kennedy Space Center because it kind of felt like this like graveyard of excellence. Right. It was like, here's all the cool things we had done. We went to the moon. We did all this cool stuff. The space shuttle, no longer flying. You know, here, look at one. Right. Admire it. It's gone. Like, yeah. we don't do this we don't anymore. We fucking do that. Yeah. And I was sad, but then I watched, uh, you know, I set up the cameras for the SpaceX launch. This, this rocket had landing legs, which everyone laughed at because they thought, why do rockets need landing legs? That's a whole different topic. Um, yeah, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, dude. I'll rockets need landing legs? Yeah, dude. Okay, go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is all in the same week, right? Like the this same trip? The same trip, yep. Okay. So I get super like stoked. I took some pictures of me in the spacesuit uh, around Kennedy Space Center just kind of doing like silly things. Yeah, yeah. And everyone on Facebook, like my friends, my parents, their friends, people that don't care about space at all thought this was hilarious. It was so funny. They just like, ah, you took it. Yeah, you're and, fucking ridiculous. And I re- and like I had a lot of fun with it, you know? And I was like, oh. And I went home and I kind of wanted to keep doing it. And that's when I realized like, oh, every day, at, like I could just be like this guy that is like an astronaut like every day. But like, like in the what, everyday mundane situations. But it wasn't the kind of the goal behind it is like everyday astronauts trying to like get back to kind of like space yeah like kind of leave it yeah kind of leave it open yeah like it's just like kind of this goofy man child that's like <laughs> definitely trying to get into space this whimsical little like he's doing things around the house how long ago was this suit. this, this was 2014 oh my god it's been since then yeah I bought it in November 2013 fuck so this was early 2014 and so I start taking these pictures and it was more because like. I actually kind of felt sad. Like I'm uh, Iowa, nowhere near rockets. Like this is how I'm going to kind of like project that project, like my love of space, get people excited, make people laugh, you know? And it was just sort of my muse. I was in the middle of weddings, like crazy. I think actually 2014 was my busiest year of weddings ever. I think Mm -hmm. that's the year that I shot like 23 or four weddings, God damn, which was a ton. Yeah. And, um, and I was using this as like an outlet, as a creative outlet, you know, because weddings at some point at first wedding can be super creative, uh, but eventually you kind of fall into your routines and it stops becoming creative and it becomes more, more, you know, routine. So that's when Tim started putting the, the space suit on the groom and would make him. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're going to wife. space. Kiss your <laughs> wife, pull the lid back up and kiss her through the tube. So <laughs> yeah, his tube. wedding photos were super tight. That's when he upped his rate to 10 K, 10 K a session, half 10K. day work. Oh, uh, anyway, so, okay. Yeah. No, so this you, is not true at all. No, it's not true. But is this when you started doing your first like volume, your volume? Yeah. One? So I decided I had good traction on these pictures that I posted on your personal Instagram, on my personal Instagram and on Facebook. Facebook. I was just like, this is the most excited I've really seen anyone. B- but were you posting it on your Tim dot photography yeah. page? So mind you, he's posting on his professional work page. He's posting yeah. these funny photos, but they're so good that it's like, damn, that's pretty tight. Yeah. Even if you're like a potential wedding client, you're like, damn, what the yeah, fuck is this? Yeah, it still is like cool. Yeah, it's still really cool. So and so you what, get volu- what, volume one becomes a thing. Well, what happens is that I'm obsessed with Reddit at this point too and like front page Reddit right. content, you know? So I was like, I'm going to save up a whole bunch of pictures and I'm going to post this as a series on Reddit. Like I bought a space suit as a joke and here you go. You guys asked for it because they had kind of people would like help me or whatever. And I was like, here you go. I released uh, like 11 or 12 pictures as a series. It was called A Day in the Life of Everyday Astronaut. It was like this astronaut brushing his teeth, you know, while reading orbital mechanics, mowing the lawn on a Segway, you know. So like, walking the dog with the drone. Walking the dog Did with the drone. Did I take that picture? Or no. I remember talking to you about it. I was like, because we also, this is also how I got really into drones was because of Tim. Tim built his own, what'd you build? Hexacopter. Hexacopter. Yeah. Out of like all spare parts from scratch, built it. And that was my first time I ever saw a fucking camera tilt and pan. And I could 
do it yeah. from the ground yeah. in the air. And we, I just saw, actually, the other day, I just saw the first video we filmed oh my God. where we went over the train, yeah, and I was, like, the blown the thing. fuck away. I was like, <laughs> oh, my fucking God. It was, like, shot 720 probably, yeah, and it was just, just terrible. Awful. But Tim had these hel- – he was building them with drones. So he used the drone and was, like, walking a dog with the drone. It just yeah. shows him – all Photoshop. It was yeah, all fucking yep. amazing Photoshop. Where it, it, he's on a Segway mowing a green grass. Like that was real. That was real. Yeah. But like, what else was it? There was one where you had like uh, rockets attached to a motorcycle, like little things. But oh, you pulled. What would you do? Tang. The um, you like like pulled the thing out of the oven. Oh, the fish. So I don't. Oh I don't even God. understand what that has to do with space. All, oh, mind you, all of these images oh have something to do with space knowledge. Easter eggs. So I don't get to explain it. So he oh has this picture God. where he's, it's Tim and he's pulling out, um, or it's the everyday astronaut. He's pulling out a pan of Easter eggs. Yeah. No. Uh, fish. It was I, like burnt I, fish. I, there's a fish on fire and I'm holding a pan of uh, Star Crunch cookies. So what the fuck is the point of that? <laughs> no, tell me. You, did, you, did I ever tell you this? No, one? you did, but it's just like so yeah. complicated for this me. This is the dumbest thing I've ever, this is when I think I was losing my mind because I was doing this stuff like, uh, that's all I thought about. Okay, let's do an easier. Before we explain what that one is, for example, there was one where you did like you played with an Apollo thirteen reference. Yeah, while well, watching Apollo thirteen. So it was just you watching Apollo thirteen. The clock was at like a certain time. Yep. It, it, yep. it was well, at the time that it exploded or something. It was yep at the the time of the the anomaly. Yep. So there's like little fun facts in his photos. Yeah. So then this one, or like or like uh, the the first one is me waking up in bed, hitting an alarm clock. The alarm clock is the time of the last. U.S. mission with people on it from for the last space shuttle. They have these the called a wake up alarm. So it's like when they physically wake up for the last uh. day of space. So I'm hitting that same alarm. At the meantime, there's a little piece of paper, and it's the echocardiogram from Alan Shepard, the first person in space. God, so it's like it. the first. It showed like the first bit of American space flight, and then the end at, at the time. Still, I. Still to this day, the end of American space flight, which is genius. And people on Reddit are going. Uh, we I let them post it, yeah, yeah. But like at this time, this is stuff that they're looking forward to. Like they yeah. want to break down your photos. Yeah. But go back to the fish one because I still want to finish. Okay, that. so the, what the fish fuck one, man. That? So I'm so I'm pulling out the all these star crunches and they're flying everywhere for because and the fish is on fire and I'm pouring water on it. Yeah, and I and don't it's all get this it. just big like this big thing. Well, if you look on, there's this picture uh, on the wall. There's a calendar. And it's uh, it shows April twentieth, and the the title of the thing is uh, Houston. We had a problem, which is again Apollo thirteen reference. Okay, and that's the the time. I think it was a. I think it was April. Uh, I'm gonna mess this up. Sometime in April, but is the transitional time too between Pisces and Aquarius? Okay, and Pisces is a fish. <laughs> is Aquarius so is a man pouring water. <laughs> this is the dumbest shit. How do you so come up with this? So it's me pouring water on a fish, and then those star crunches that are everywhere. Yeah. They're exactly lined up with the constellations of Pisces and Aquarius. Oh, my God. No one figured that one out on Reddit. And that's when I realized I might be a serial killer. For fucking sure. (laughs) For fucking sure. God damn it. All right. So I'm going to – I'm sharing this entire – I'm going to put all of Tim's Everyday Astronaut links in the show notes too so you can see it. You got to fucking look at this shit and follow him on Instagram. Everyday Astronaut. Always plug. Um, (laughs) Okay. So you you create volume one. Basically, how many photos? Twelve? Uh. Yeah, like 12 or 13. 12 amazing photos, photoshopped and some are real, whatever. You release it on Reddit. Yeah. And it does terrible. It gets no No, no, views. No, no, no. No, no, I'm joking. Uh, I was like, Ben! (laughs) Punchline, Ben! It blew up. Didn't it get like a shit ton of... It was was front page. Front page. Yeah. um, A lot of views on that. A lot of views, yeah. Over a million? I don't know if that one had over a million. Uh, The next one. So then I started not blowing my load and doing a full series and just releasing individual pictures, yeah. So, wait, what do you mean? So you did you did twelve at once, and yeah. then the next one was a new series, but it was like individually being released, or would you call it a series? I would. I, I tried another series for Reddit, and it, they didn't care. Okay. So then I was just posting random pictures of me in a spacesuit that like were funny and, right. and would stand on their own as like a funny. He had like one of thing. him hanging onto balloons floating up into space. Yeah. We did a we did one that was cool with the your Inspire one, the drone, mm-hmm. where oh, Tim yeah. Tim like um, drew a house. A building uh, and windows. No, no, no. You didn't. I don't even know if you drew it. You it just took. He printed out printed pictures out, of yeah. windows. Yeah. And laid it on the ground, and then he he brought a parachute. This yep. motherfucker got a parachute. <laughs> so he laid on the ground, all smashed up against this building, and then I flew the drone up and shot a picture straight down, so it looked like he smoked the side of the building yeah. going full speed, which we tried to do well, because I tried to do this series called No Photoshop. Yes. Because I had a lot of people saying that my first series was like all Photoshop, which it was, and it yeah. was fun. So I, as a creative challenge for myself, I decided to screw this. 
the next one, I'm not going to do any Photoshop. Which so when you're saying the next one, does this mean that the I, individual posts or you do it in a complete? I, I did still series. Like I did still try to do series, but uh, and I would I would release them as series. Mm-hmm. I did like three different series like that. Um, but people really didn't care that they were serious. They just wanted the content. They just wanted you know? to see the stuff. Yeah. So he did, he even had one where, um, or what he did when he did the no Photoshop thing, you actually had our friend Scotty Russell create oh, yeah. your logo. Yep. And so he had a logo created by Perspective Collective, which I'll hopefully have on the podcast at some point. Time, great illustrator. Yep. So Scotty created a logo, but Tim would print it and put it in the actual photo. So it was really yeah, there. The watermark was yeah. The watermark there. was really there as if it were added in post or yeah. whatever, like you yeah. normally would. So like everything was really, really I creative. Had to build a wall for that one mirror picture. Oh yeah. God damn it. He built the, yeah. Explain that. I Was it with I your wanted, nephew? Yeah. My nephew had a, like a little kid spacesuit that kind of matched mine. Yeah. So I built a wall and put like some plexiglass in there. I made it look like it's a mirror, you know? Yeah. And then I just stood on one side and he stood on the other. So it looks we... like this kid staring up at himself like the future of him. Yeah. It was amazing. God damn it. Those, that fucking series. <laughs> so he, he's got these back-to-back series. At one point, there's one... Th- that shit got like millions of views. He's one some, of them did. Yeah, a couple. I've had a, a, about 20 million views altogether. 20 I'm million sure. views collected in all these photos that he's posting. It's blowing up on Reddit. Everyone's knowing who the everyday astronaut is. You, be, you start building your Instagram account. Yeah, by the way, at the beginning of... The first series and stuff, that first viral thing, yeah. I didn't have Everyday Astronaut on Instagram. So did you have to buy it from someone? Yeah. Do you know that story? Yeah, I think I remember this. I, l- I might cry if I tell it because it's really sad. What? So, not sad, but really beautiful. So <laughs> I reached out to Everyday Astronaut, the guy that had that handle, before I released it on Reddit because I knew, like, you know, branding, man, you got to be tight with no, the branding. Oh, yeah, smart. And uh, I-, I offered him money. Like, I was like, hey, man, I'll pay 100 bucks for this. He's like, no, sorry. And I was like... What, was he using bucks. it? It was an active account just or was he a, just an egg? Just uh, No, it was his personal, just him. He's like, sorry, man. It's kind of like my thing. And I was You're like, like, dude, it's my thing. <laughs> well, but, you know, you don't want to take that from somebody. You no, know, yeah. like, yeah, I yeah, get it. Do. I mean, yeah, yeah I yeah. did. I did. Yeah, I want you did. to. Yeah. But so and what happened? I, I kept, like, offering, like, more and more money. And I got up to, like, I think 500 bucks. Right. He's like, sorry, man. It's just not for sale. Like, this is me. Okay, dude. Then all of a sudden, it goes Reddit. He hits me back up. He goes, dude, I saw your pictures on Reddit. I'm ready to sell it now. Holy I'm like, shit. I'm like, oh, great. You know, yeah, he probably wants 500. Time. Now he's going to want like 5,000 or something. He goes, I really like what you're doing. It's awesome. I'll sell it to you for a dollar, but you got to send me some prints. Like of your photography? Yeah. And I was like, for a dude. Dollar? Yeah. He goes, uh, just a dollar so I can tell my friends I sold it. Wow. And then he gave me the handle. That's amazing. Isn't that great? That's fucking and sick. And so that kid, like, I, I owe him, like, half. Have you, you know? ever met that kid? Where's he from? Uh, he's from Canada. Canada. Canadians, yeah. man. Shout out to the Canadians. Canadians, man. They're so nice. Damn. I Right now, it sucks because for the Black Window Cream, I have blackwindowcream.com, and I really want bwnc.com. It makes things just so much easier. Yeah. But they want, like, $3,500 for it, and I'm Holy just, like, not God. trying to, you know, pay $3,500. Yeah, no. i am trying to buy merch and shit. And Could you have it. bwn.c or something? I don't know. I've looked at a couple. I just want, it's so easy. Yeah. Everyone always like, what's up, BWNC? They always say it. So it's like, yeah. fuck, I really want. Why can't that motherfucker find me and give it to me <laughs> for a dollar? I'll get, send you some merch or something. Yeah. Okay. yeah Damn it. I know. I was really lucky. So Instagram, you get that. You start building it up. Yeah. Now you, you're at like how many followers now? 64,000. 64,000 followers. Yeah. Motherfucker got a spacesuit on an auction site on, and didn't do anything with it for over six months and now has 64,000 people that follow his account, which is cool. I yeah. mean, obviously, it's weird because you get millions and millions of views and you have like this small That's following. That's what I hate about Instagram, man. But it's okay. That's good. The conversion That's, rate's awful. It's still good. And slash what I hate about Reddit is like you can hit them over and over again. I think I've had like a dozen individual front page posts with Everyday Astronaut that all like say, go to, you know, follow me. The conversion rate, like three million views on a picture, and I'll get like a thousand followers. That's weird. It's like what? I mean, I think that's anything because you kind of look at it like um, even when I do photography with like Q and Shane, Q's got like two or three million followers. Yeah. And whenever he posts and tags me, I'll I'll get like a couple hundred every time. Yeah. And but he's got millions. Yeah, it's people even are with Chris so, Brown and stuff like that. He's people got are fucking so lazy hun- they don't want to ever fall. I mean, uh, yeah, it's we're weird. All, it's just, but that's just how it is. It, yeah. You know? But I mean, at the same time, how many times have you seen something and be like, oh, that was really funny, and I'm like, I'm gonna go follow the creator of that. Right. Like, not nah. It was Almost just a funny never. cat video with a meme. Like, made right. it. I, I don't care. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so you start building up the account. Um, you start finding success in it, and you're still doing wedding photography. Mm-hmm. At a certain point, you decide. 
I need to kind of tackle this on its own and build it out into something more than just a couple funny photos. Yeah. You actually decided to create some sort of educational piece out of it. Yeah. Which is so weird because it was it was a fucking joke. It was funny. It was <laughs> yeah. just funny. Yeah. And then somehow you decide like because that's what I'm saying. Out of nowhere, you started dropping mad science. I I'd go to yeah. your live streams. He started being on Twitch. He's on YouTube doing live streams. So I'd hop in and he'd be sitting there. The people are asking him real space questions and he's answering shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? When did you <laughs> learn about that? The fucking rocket ship has legs. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm like, what oh, do you that's mean? So advanced. I know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and so I start seeing you. T- even I think we were talking to real astronauts on Reddit or something, right? Yeah. And, it- and like a couple of astronauts have popped in my Instagram live streams and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and and so Tim's, you know, starting to get in this weird world where you had an opportunity to take that to another level, which now if I have to talk to people about what you do, I'm kind of like, he's kind of like the, a Bill Nye, like a new yeah. young version of Bill Nye, the science guy, right. except in a, in a space world. Yeah. And so, so explain to everyone listening where, where your goals are now taking that into this new world. You, you quit, he quits. Okay. Do the math earlier. Yeah. He said his, his like base amount of money he's making was like 30 some or three, 30 some hundred dollars for weddings. And he just said he had his, busy year was like 27 ways do right. the fucking math so you decide to give that up right to take on this world also mind you he gets he proposes to his now wife yeah and they did a cool picture or whatever and then they redid it in his spacesuit. so he f- even got her on board and she <laughs> fucking d- let him do a, yeah, <laughs> a proposal yeah. picture in his spacesuit. at machu picchu and yeah so like super supportive you yeah. quit everything and begin to build i remember you were talking about doing a children's book mm-hmm. you're talking about some other stuff that i don't know what we can talk about on here yeah um you're de- designing and creating concepts for maybe shows and yep. and youtube and all this stuff so what is your goals now what where, where do you start taking it over the last six months till now well let me talk about that transition real quick so it makes sense in context now um the i did the same thing with photography i had a hobby it went into an obsession mm-hmm. and became a profession and that's I followed that same intuition, that same like sense of I can't get this out of my head. I care way too much about this. I want to get other people excited, you know. And I did that same thing with space flight. Like I love this stuff. How do I get people on the same level? And I realized like my photography on Instagram, although like people like it as like a fan of like oh these are funny fun pictures, I couldn't engage them to actually educate them about why I'm so excited about this stuff. Because mm. I'm I was just a normal person four or five years ago. You know, <laughs> I was just a normal person. Who <laughs> didn't I'm, give, I'm just a normal guy that didn't give a fuck about uh, space, space, and now I love it. Yeah, now it's all but that matters. That's, that's what you're talking about. Is your goal is like, okay, but how do I educate them, or why do I get people? Because why is it important for us to care about space flight? No one's flying to space anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is that a problem? Do you want me to tell you why? I mean, if you don't mind. <laughs> well, uh, people. First off, we haven't stopped flying in space ever. Uh, we just now buy seats from Russia. So Uh-oh. since 2011, since the end of the space shuttle program, we still fly. Uh, on the Russian Soyuz vehicle. And we exchange crew members about every f- three months. Okay. And people are, we've had a constant presence in space since like 19, I don't even remember, 80 something or 91 or something. Right, right. So there's always been people in space, only about six at a time. Um, but we haven't launched from the United States for a while. But the reason it's important, and I think my biggest reason why I think it's important is uh, is what it does to us as a collective humanity mm. to explore together. Uh, my, my favorite thing ever is 1975, uh, the Apollo spacecraft. We had one last, there was one last Apollo mission, and our Cold War enemies, so think about like actual war enemies, Yeah. This, the, the Soviet Union, uh, we docked spacecraft in orbit. So they had their Soyuz, we had an Apollo, and we had an Apollo-Soyuz mission where we docked collectively, still in the middle of war, and shared a handshake and like exchanged gifts and had dinner and stuff. That's fuck in the middle of in space. In the middle of space, man. That's a fucking trip. Dog. And to me, that's the most beautiful. That represents space right there to me. Yeah. To me, that's just like the most beautiful thing that could happen. And it gives me hope for humanity because we can put aside our differences and you realize that we're all just on this tiny little ball floating around in space mm-hmm. together. We all share the same home. You know, we're all in this together. And when you get out there, there's this thing called the overview effect that astronauts experience where they look back at Earth and they realize, why do we have wars? Why do we have borders? Why do we have all this stuff? It's so petty. We're all on this little teeny thing out here right. in this vast ocean of nothingness, you know? Like, why do we hate each other? And and to me, like, that is so profoundly important going forward. And especially as the world is more and more interconnected, 
through like the internet and stuff. Mm-hmm. It, it's even more and more important to have a collective goal and a collective. We humans long to explore. We've always explored. We've explored the oceans and the tallest mountains and the deepest seas, and the and space. Uh, not to quote Star Trek, but it's the final frontier. It's finally like the next step in our in our progression as humanity to explore. And the best part of all, it's not Spain going and trying to find a new continent. It's not. You know, for the country, you know, Russia, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's humans going together right. and exploring new worlds together as a collective humanity. And to me, that's just the most beautiful thing. Damn, yeah, that's cool as fuck. Okay, so we put that That's away. why. And the, it <laughs> takes, but it takes people to, they might have to find their own reason why they want to, why, why space is important to them. And, and like, you might have to get them with some little fact. That's what that's I was going to really say. Cool. The way you said that is so inspirational and gives you a positive outlook on, on our life. And to understand that our problems aren't that big, and especially in this world, because this world's not that big. Yeah. And I, when you say that, that makes me think about how you're talking about. Damn, I kind of want to speak to people. I want to yeah. go and talk about this. Just put the jokes aside, all the all the fun funness in it, and yeah. actually breaking it down for people and putting that piece into it. I feel like hearing you go and say that to me before I'm about to start my next uh, three months at work after Christmas. Yeah. Might jack me up a little bit more to be like fuck it yeah dude let's get after it let's make this year better so you i remember you talked about doing public speaking Mm -hmm. all this shit so do you is that like the goal you want to pass that message to new people and try to reopen up everyone's eyes is it like to focus completely on space or just to explain through space why we could be better people to me it's really i'm finding that there's an enough people like me that are maybe finding childhood memories of, of the space shuttle or for like my parents of the Apollo missions and mm-hmm. all these cool things that happened in space and they are longing for a new adventure, you know? Right. And I just found myself a- asking a lot of questions, finding the answers. And now I'm trying to p- really provide a place where people can come and ask questions and live streams, a simple resource for people to an- answer questions they might have when watching you know, they might be getting into this stuff, but it's like, where do you even start? Right. Or like, maybe they have an advanced question. I want to be able to answer that. I just want to be able to come to people wherever they are at and be able to help them. And and, and most importantly, I want to help people know that they don't need to be rocket scientists to to like this stuff. Right, exactly. You can be an everyday person mm-hmm. and and cheer for it, you know? And and what's happening right now is, is it's almost turning into like sports in a sense. We're like, you know... I, how many people watch football that never played football right, or maybe played football in high school for a little bit or whatever that are obsessed with that? Right. Well, that's there's room for that in, in the science community, in so, the space flight realm. There's room to be cheering for your favorite rocket company and your favorite you know, missions and all this stuff, and it's something that we can all do together. And, uh, and you don't have to be a rocket scientist to find it fun and interesting and entertaining. And that's what's cool is like you have Tesla creating cars, but at the same time SpaceX also ran by the same person. Yeah. Is launching shit into the fucking into our entire galaxy and shit yeah. like exploring that's fucking crazy. Yeah. So okay, cool. So with that being said, Tim starts um creating YouTube content and live streaming. Yeah. First you were on Twitch. Are you still yeah. on Twitch? Uh-uh. Yeah. All right. I, I told you. Yeah, you did. I told you YouTube you was a wave. You so Tim goes on Twitch and he's and he's on there, he's dedicating hours and hours and hours making content and answering questions and, and then he moves to YouTube and you're starting to create content and now you're literally like scripting content and shooting shit regularly. How often are you coming out with uh new videos? At least once a month. I'm trying for about every two weeks. Okay, every two weeks. But he's also not just – his account isn't inactive when he's not putting out a video. He's live streaming Sometimes pretty often, yeah. right? Um, Normally, I would say on average maybe two or three times a week. Okay. A little like two or three hour live streams. And they're, and they're what? Q&As or what are you doing? They're actually – 90% of the time it's me – it's either me – uh, watching a live launch, yeah. a webcast of a launch, and then commenting over and answering people's questions about those launches. Yeah. Or it's me playing this game called Kerbal Space Program, which is where you build rockets and you launch them to place. What do you and mean? Like, oh, it's like an actual game. It's a computer game. Oh, dope. And I sit there and just build rockets and people ask me questions. That's tight as fuck. It's fun. So so you're doing that and you're making more content and you're building out. Are you, You're taking this anywhere else? I knew you were out in LA not too long ago. Were you shooting some content for something that yeah, you can so, briefly talk about? Well, let's... And real quick, I, I do want to say with YouTube specifically, um, it didn't gain traction at all. Okay, yeah, you're right. Let's talk about that because we were talking about that off camera. Yeah. Which, okay, so, and for me, coming from working with EA Sports and all this stuff, I'm meeting tons of successful gamers, YouTubers, whatever, and they all say the same thing. It's 
yo, you have to put in the work. Sometimes it could take a year. You're getting no views on your videos, no subscribers, nothing's happening. And out of nowhere, if you put in the work, you will be discovered. Mm -hmm. So for you, you were saying, dude, it took six months before I had anything. And we were just looking at Tim's stats on YouTube and he just landed on the front page of YouTube. Uh, what, what was the, the section tr- called? Trend is the trending page under uh, Creator on the Rise. Creator on the Rise. So Tim's a creator on the rise on YouTube, and he got a special email. He like sends it to me in a text. I don't know if we can say this publicly, but <laughs> he's like, dude, this is going to be crazy. I'm like, holy shit, this is dope. And it's like, hey, in 24 hours, we're going to put you on this thing, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. Like, He's worked so fucking hard at that, and he's creating content all the time, and now they're actually going to honor him for that. Right. And so his account gets on there. He gets a couple new thousand subscribers or whatever, yep. and you're now, your account's at like how many? 40? Right about to hit 40. 40,000 yeah. subs. So he's gotten his account up to 40,000 subs in how long? How many How many so days? Realistically, since I've started trying to do like scripted videos and stuff, about six months. Six months of working on it, and he's got yeah. 40,000 subs, and he just did a first, is it your first time doing a paid uh, advertisement? Uh, yeah. So you just got a cool brand deal where you like did some stuff. What are those things called? Mova Globes. Mova Globes. They're sick. Yeah. I just played with one and it's like this, it's got like a, a solar panel in yeah. it, I guess. That they automatically just like spin. It's always magically. spinning inside this glass ball. They're pretty tight. So you can get them on. MovaGlobes.com probably or something. Sponsor that. Um, <laughs> sponsor, you can sponsor my podcast, Mova Globes, if you want. <laughs> uh, anyway. That's what you've been able to do. You ju- you're starting to build a real brand out of this, and and he's made promises. You have a a, a Patreon, so people mm-hmm. are are committing to Tim by paying even as low as like a dollar a, a month, month yeah. to just support Tim in creating this content to provide new media for them, yep. new content for yep. them. So he's working. He's got his setup in here um, where he has like a light setup. He's got cameras. He's got three different walls that he's using as backdrops. He's able to flip and create his media on his Mac Pro and he's editing his content and he's producing his content, shooting his photos, doing all this shit all by himself pretty much. Mm-hmm. Maybe your wife helps you out sometimes. No, but sometimes my friend Neil Johnson, if I need like a BTM, Neil does. yeah, Neil help. Cool. So he's been making all this stuff. You actually did just do a Tesla, which was pretty tight. You just yeah. did this Tesla spot um, and got second place. We got second. second Behind MKVHD, Marquise Brownlee. Yeah, yeah, that dude's dope on YouTube. Yeah, His channel's huge. really cool. Like, I, I, It's funny. I'm a big fan of him, but I sure he was my number one enemy at that thing. Cause I was going to say. He had so he has so many followers. It was a popularity contest, so of course he won. No, oh, absolutely. You know? And so Tim did a spot where he had to create a, an ad basically for yeah. Tesla. Yep. Wasn't it around space that you did yours? Ours was, yeah, with, with me in the space suit. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you can see that on Tesla's website now, or well, where is it on their, on YouTube? They made a playlist on their YouTube of Project Love Day winners. But was it on your channel? It was on my channel. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you could, I'll link it in the thing, too. But it got a shit ton of views. Half a million. Half a million views for fucking Tim riding around a Tesla, and the <laughs> first place, all you do is get like honored at, at a Tesla we, event. We almost got the same thing. They you just, and him? Yeah. So they just played your video, right? Yeah, at this at, Tesla event. But he got flown out there for it, which is about the only difference. Whatever. They got to give me a Tesla <laughs> to make it worth it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> give me a fucking car, dude. So anyway, he's been doing a lot of cool shit with it. But I, what I like is that he's been growing this channel and finding new ways to create content, which I, are you planning on trying to make content more regularly? I know every YouTuber that I've ever met, their biggest success is when they went to weekly or daily. Right. So right. I'm trying. Any, what's it's your hard, plan? man. I'm. Cranking them out is uh, the problem. Is a lot of the stuff I do is scripting, like really heavily researched topics. I was gonna say it feels like a real TV show the way you do it. Like it's I, very like calculated. You yeah. know exactly what you're talking about. And I had to like have all these diagrams, and I do After Effects animations, and I write all the music for the videos, and like it's a huge thing. And it and I ended up cranking one out in 15 hours, so I could be at the top like the news run, you know? Yeah. Because Elon uh, Elon Musk announced like a new rocket, a new version of the rocket, and I did a really thorough breakdown on it, like comparing it to other rockets in history, having all these charts up and stuff. And it still uh, literally didn't sleep that. I've never pulled a full-blown all-nighter. Right. And I did because that happened at at 11.30 p.m. because he was in Australia for the announcement. Um, Wait, what do you mean you've never done a full-blown all-nighter? I've never pulled a where you just literally don't sleep. Never? never, No, I don't do that. I got to sleep. What the fuck? I mean, I've gone like, I've done like two hours of sleep. You know, I just did all-nighter like three days ago. Dude, you do it like every two weeks. I know, but how do you not do how didn't we do an all nighter at that that film challenge? The we Robin probably Ghost slept college? like two hours. Maybe you know what right. I mean. Like yeah. I've I've never actually just not slept. That's crazy. I normally get some kind of sleep in the night, no okay. matter what. Fair enough, because it's important. You yeah. know, like, but I I, I use it. I didn't sleep until the next night, and it was so I could get this video done. And it took me 15 hours. And I realized if I have to, I could probably do a video in 15 hours. But there's so much scripting. 
you know, that I want to make sure I'm like doing this stuff right. And I've rushed that one a little more than I would normally feel comfortable with. But so how did it perform? Did it do oh, well? Oh, great. 180,000 views in two weeks. Because you got it up quick enough that it was relevant yep. and you played off that. So you've yep. been really, really diving into the YouTube formula and what's working. And, yes. And cool. Yeah. And it's funny because my videos are gaining so much more traction than they should with my subscription base just because I'm hitting on topics and having good enough like SEO and good enough linkability. And they're just, yeah, it, it's uh, YouTube has been so encouraging because they're pushing me yeah. with suggested videos. And apparently I think the big thing is with YouTube, you got to pay attention to your retention rate. Mm. You got to pay attention to your likes versus dislikes. Those are two huge things that, that if YouTube knows that they have people hooked for an entire 10 minute video and your retention rate 60%. Right. That's great. You know, yeah, they're yeah, going to yeah. keep pushing you because obviously people like are agreeable shit. to you. Yeah. Right. And so that's been important is for me to produce good enough content that the retention rate stays high. My like ratio is like 97%, you know, like, yeah. And so YouTube, their algorithm obviously sees that, okay, we got like, we got to keep suggesting this. This will keep people on our page because mm. YouTube's biggest goal is to keep people watching YouTube videos. Right. That's how they make money. So you got to think about that as like, don't make clickbaity stuff and have it be a terrible video. If people watch three seconds and turn away, it's going to die. It's going to be dead. That's and- all I make on YouTube. <laughs> That's the only, my, my thumbnails are so fucking tight <laughs> and the content's so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but all you got to do is you got to have enough of a hook. If you're asking the big, like a lot of thumbnails and a lot of YouTube videos are, are asking a question. What is this? This, this, mm-hmm. if you don't give people the, chance to at least think you're going to answer that question yeah <laughs> in an entertaining way don't don't do that right, right. you're actually doing yourself a disservice like at least make it so your content lines up with like your title you know and all right. that stuff uh to a minimum because i think that's important is that you aren't misleading people into clicking on you mm-hmm. you're you're if anything you're misleading people into clicking on you so you can answer that question right you know what i mean yeah so that's been i think and by the way if you had asked me if you to if my wife and I decided we'll take a year. Like Tim, she's like, I'll give you 2017. And if you don't, then you're going to start either shooting weddings again. You know, well, she didn't like say it like this, but you know, like she's like, then you're, we're going to have to go back into something else. And I'm like, yeah, I can do public speaking and maybe a few weddings if I need to, you know, I can always go back into photography a month ago. So in this, we're recording this in October, especially like beginning of September, I would have had serious doubts whether or not it was going to make sense as a career. What happened? I the channels more than doubled in the past three weeks and subscription and in subscriptions, um, the ad revenue is actually starting to like make money like subst- like not a substantial but you know supplementary yeah Patreon's coming through really hard, um, oh yeah go back to Patreon real quick because it's cool how many do you, how many people do you have supporting you right now one hundred and twenty now one hundred twenty ranging from a dollar to what one one couple gives a hundred dollars your parents no damn yeah. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. Shout out to them. Yeah. Do you know them? Have oh, you talked yeah. to them? Very good friends with them, actually. Really? Yeah. They're my friends out in LA. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I don't know if I need to like say who they are. No, yeah. You don't have to. Yeah. But I'm just saying that's cool. So yeah. so you have these different people supporting you in, in that range, which yeah. is accumulating like a few a few hundred dollars a month almost. Just crack 600. So if you think about that, it's like if you take that plus your ad revenue plus any brand deals you can do, I yeah. mean, you begin to become making a true living off this, yeah, which is Yeah. I sick. think I'll be making... At this rate, and the, the the important thing is growth. Right. You know, not screw, like right now, say I stayed absolutely stagnant like this, I'd probably make thirty or $40,000 a year, mm. you know, off the, all the different avenues. Yeah, yeah. And that's fine. That's that's obviously enough to make a living. Right. Like that's, especially in Iowa, where, yeah. where I live, like that's a that's a healthy enough living in For Iowa. For sure. Um, and then plus, you know, my wife works full time. We'd be fine off. But more importantly, I see the growth and I see the potential. And so, so does other people. Potential. I mean, I had just this last week, man. Sorry, it's my no, mic. You're good. The mic's fine. A little bit. No, you're good. Right. Um, just last week, or just this week now, I've had you know a management company reach out to me, all these different people, like all these different sponsor opportunities, because apparently I was starting to rank on analytics of like growth rates too, you know. So they're seeing a lot of potential too. Yeah. And so. God damn it! I knew that was gonna happen. I'm so stupid. Sorry, I let a phone call come in. I forgot to shut off my shit. <laughs> Fuck! I'm a terrible fucking podcast host. <laughs> Fuck! Uh, sorry, go on. The management company hit you up. I mean, just you know, all these opportunities because once they start to see growth, and once you're, you know, producing good enough content that YouTube is is seeing it as valuable and as recommended content, and it's hitting all the right, you know, metrics, then. Mm-hmm. 
you're unstoppable, yeah. I think, you know? It's cool because uh, the first podcast episode I recorded was with my friend Justin Odisho, who has a YouTube channel where he um, – Basically, it's like Premiere Pro. He's like the mm-hmm. super whiz on yeah. that and Photoshop. And he's grown his numbers all the way up to like almost 400,000 subs. Oh, he, wow. I think he's at 360 right Dang, now or something. Yeah. He's crushed it. Yeah. So it's cool to hear you two both talk about living a life where YouTube is your paycheck and that that's your opportunity because yeah. you're able to catapult that. He's been able to touch with so many people. Yeah. It's weird because before I knew him, I was using him as a resource, you know? Yeah. And so being that resource is super, super helpful. And I think it takes a special person to go above and beyond to create the content because you see the value in it for yourself, but you also see the value in it for other people. Other people yeah. You know, and I don't think yeah. a lot of people would take the time to curate their room to have three different backgrounds. And you're <laughs> talking about, you know, I mean like to be able to say, oh I could turn here and this is where I talk about this or I turn here and this most people are just like bumps you know and right. they don't want to do it and that's why a lot of people stick to that nine to five or whatever it was that they might not be completely happy with but i think taking that risk yeah. you took an extreme risk you know what i mean and a lot of people won't ever understand what the risk was to you or why it was so important to you mm-hmm. but that's i think the hardest part is just doing it yeah you know oh I mean? yeah yeah just fucking do it yeah and at least you had someone supporting you yo dude you get 12 months right you know what i mean 12 that's months almost probably put more of a fire into my butt hell you know? yeah because you're nervous now you're like yeah. fuck okay i gotta make this happen but you did you pulling it off like right now if you could even even if this was it like you figured out how to at least get to this part which most people can't even get to you know to be able to say oh i could pull 30 to 40k a year off of just what i'm doing right now and make a living off that and then who knows you know next year and you 30 how many subs you have Forty thousand subs yeah it's fucking crazy dude think about it like once you start building that up and like how that just grows oh my god i'm i'm not gonna hedge any bets but i I know almost for a fact that for sure by the end of the year i'll hit 50 um, but I, I'm almost, I wouldn't put it past that. I think at this rate, we might see a hundred by the end of the year. You should see a hundred by the end of the year. Isn't that crazy? Fuck yeah. I love YouTube. And I think with my, growth. my streak right now, as far as my podcast, even though no one's heard any of these yet, cause I haven't released any of them. <laughs> Justin on my channel was like at 310 or something. He's like, I think, but you know, I might have 10,000 more by the time this comes out. And I checked it right before I was going to release the podcast and he already has like 25,000 new f- fucking f- Isn't that crazy? subscribers. Yeah. It's sick. Yeah. So, okay. I love this story. It, we were hitting over an hour. I'm my, I'm really terrible at keeping these short. <laughs> um, I, I didn't allow anyone to ask any questions because this was last minute. I'm here for my sister's wedding. I packed up the shit. You had time. So yeah. you hopped on and I know most people would ask a cert, a few certain questions. So I just want to kind of fire them off at you. You don't yeah. have to like, you know, yeah. answer them in yeah, depth. Yeah. But I think what, what I'm interested to know is what your what is your five year plan? What's the next five years? What do you what, what do you hope to get out of Everyday Astronaut? Like, is there benchmarks that you've had yeah. you have set for yourself? Obviously, you have to get some shit done in 2017. Believe it or not, I I don't quite think that long term. Um, I'm more like I got to hit this metric and then I move the bar, hit that metric, move the bar. That's how I personally operate, and I've kind of always been that way. Mm-hmm. But long term wise, I definitely see it as being, you know, I'm working. We've been working on um, a television development, you know, or a short form development of, of some point. Um, I, I definitely see an opportunity for books, you know, merchandising, things like that. Um, but more importantly, I, I think just like actually being a resource for people to be able to answer questions. That's like, you know, reaching a, a greater audience is, is the, the end goal. And that's, I think something that's very achievable. Well, I think that you have an advantage or will have the soon advantage of is that, like you said earlier, I think it was off camera, actually, you were talking about how you would live stream when SpaceX would live stream and mm-hmm. you would just make sure you went live like right before they did. And then when they would go live, they would talk for like 10 minutes and mm-hmm. there'd be like 25 minutes of downtime. Yep. And you took that as an opportunity to say, I'm going to talk about the same shit, but I'm actually going to be present and be a voice and, mm-hmm. and basically ask questions, ask questions or answer, or answer questions, questions yeah. and spearhead. Yeah. So what I am waiting for is the day that all of these massive NASA and SpaceX, those are the two biggest ones right now in America, right? Oh, so, well, NASA's uh, NASA's kind of dead, huh? Well, no, no, no. NASA's very <laughs> alive, but they I don't know shit. it's it's realistically there's there's actually a bunch, but SpaceX is the huge one, and they deliver payloads for NASA. Okay, so it's not quite. It's more like the NBA and the and yeah, I got you. and the Bulls. Right, right, you right. Know, it's not like necessarily head to head. So, but I'm waiting for the time where you are such an influence, and could be the space like host like you you why the fuck would it tim or the everyday astronaut be the host for this launch because there's no reason they shouldn't be employing you to come out and talk instead of just taking pictures of these fucking rockets launching which your shit looks amazing and i'll link to that as well but to go and be the person that's 
entertaining us during a launch like that to make because look if they're if they don't care about the way they're they're i'm not saying they don't care about it but it sounds like if they leave a live stream dead for 20 minutes who the fuck's gonna sit there and watch that you know what i mean right. like they're just waiting for the actual launch but if you could start hooking me with knowledge and teaching me why this is important to watch what's happening i think that that's going to be such a, a positive thing to have and i don't see why they wouldn't be hiring you well i my my goal. I don't want to be hired by anybody. Because Not saying hire you right. full time. That's your job. I'm saying right. you're the like. It's no the different than when we hire right. people to come out and do a spot like Little yep. Dicky in our yeah. EA Sports. Like you're funny. You're a great person to talk about this topic. Come on out. We're gonna pay you a lot but of money. At the same time, do. man. I think the audience is. I just this is only like my fourth or fifth launch. I started at like 200 people watching or a hundred. No, I started at like 70 people watching. Then like 200. Then 400. Then 900. 1400 on Monday. Wednesday there was a launch. 2000 people. God damn. It just keeps growing. Then you might just have the channel of where people go. Exactly. But then you you know charge for that little advertisement. Say exactly. so, you know if you guys want to stick your SpaceX logo on my forehead, I'll tattoo it. <laughs> um. So I these are questions that I've had from other yeah. guests or whatever, but. I like this one. A lot of creatives go through times when they feel like their work isn't progressing and they get frustrated and have lack of motivation. How do you deal with these challenges and how do you, uh, and how can you help someone who's in this low? I would, oh, that's a great question. That is a good question. Because it's the most frustrating thing as a creative if you're someone that writes or draws or shoots or does whatever. Not having that motivation or not having that, that calling, that muse, is, it feels dead. You know, like it's just awful. I would say the biggest thing is to listen to yourself and and follow whatever little thing, even if it's so wildly unrelated to what your creative outlet is, mm -hmm. to follow that. I think I'm the perfect example of that. 100%. Space and a stupid old Russian spacesuit is in no way related to photography and art. But I was so drawn to it that it started bleeding into my creative outlet and it became my creative outlet. Yeah. You know, and if you're super into video games and you like to draw, okay, start drawing, doing fan art of video games or whatever. Like, yeah. do that. Like, don't, you know, or whatever. Say you're a photographer and, and you're super into cars, you know, but, like, you haven't crossed those two worlds. Do that. Maybe those right. cars will provide your new muse, you know. Like, Fuck yeah. listen to what you also care about outside of your, your creative outlet, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, listen to your other passions One and thing pursue I them. One thing I like that you were saying earlier is, well, off two different things. One where you were talking about <clears throat> having like a, a you want to provide, well, I don't know how you phrase it, damn it. You said something <laughs> about like you, you would take so many jobs, but you would turn jobs down so that you could have a real life. Yeah. A quality of quality life. Quality of right? life. Yeah, yeah. You wanted a quality of life. And you also said, I don't pull all nighters. So, which is super interesting to me. <laughs> so I agree and I think I, I fucking personally struggle with this because I'm in a position where there's no safety net to what I do. So I'm constantly, right. you know, trying everything. Yeah. You're in the same position yeah. now where it takes 15 hours to make the video because you think it might work and that might catapult your career. So you give up certain things, but in, in a relationship right now, especially married, you're married and you have like goals and your marriage and shit. How do you balance um, your passion, your ideas, the amount of time that you think it's going to take to invest into that, but also still to have that quality have of life. life. I like that you've already made that a goal. Like you make that priority, which I'm trying to start making. I'm trying to go yeah. to the beach every week. I want to do that from now on once a week. Yep. Like I'm trying to find new ways because it's 24 hours a day. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything yeah, we do is 24 can, hours a day. When you work for yourself, you can dig yourself into a hole and only be involved with working still. Yeah. You know, everyone, everyone fears like the cubicle, the, the nine to five. But maybe the greater like enemy would be yourself working yourself too hard. Right. And yes, you got to be able to grind when you need to. And it's really addicting at the beginning when you see growth to just keep, you know, that is a pinnacle moment and that is, it's exponential. So the earlier you get on that, the earlier growth happens, the more followers you have and the more followers you have, the more followers you have, and the more followers you get, et cetera, et cetera. The more work comes. The more work you're comes. you're going to want to keep providing. Exactly. So you still have to like, for me, man, I, I've said this for a long time that it's, I don't want to, I want to, my goal in life is to make as much money as possible by working as little as possible. Mm -hmm. And it's a, and it's a yin and yang there. Like you should be able to value yourself more so that you can charge more and, and do what's worth it. You were talking about your friend, the, the YouTuber and Instagrammer that will be like, nah, it's not worth me getting three grand to show up and do take a picture for a story. That's yeah. Not, It'll take me six seconds, but I don't want to do it for three grand. Yeah. I, I need 15 grand to even turn my head. Of course. Like, obviously, we're not, no one, we're not at that level. But, like, at the same time, like, I'm going to say no to doing a family picture, even if I could make 400, 500 bucks right. in that hour. 
because it's not furthering what I'm working on. I'd rather put that time somewhere into something else. else. And yes, it might only I might only be paying myself, you know, at this point about twenty bucks an hour or something. Mm-hmm. But the end goal it is more important, and that still affords me. What would happen if I shot that? I'd probably shoot that and then still do the same amount of work on my own, and I'd end up just working more. You worked, yeah, the entire day it, versus half the day exactly. and spent the rest of the time doing whatever you guys want to do exactly. and you go eat or get some coffee or something. Have a life. Like, yeah, yeah, have a life. Damn. Okay, that's cool. It's important. It keeps you you know, rejuvenated. Um I like I like everything we talked about. Honestly, I don't I fucking I have so many other questions that I could ask you, but I I really think we hit them all. I love I love where you're going with this. I think that there's so much value in this that someone's going to try to benefit off of it, which is going to just directly affect you. Someone's going to try to like put a show together and make you this you're going to be on Facebook's new streaming service or some shit like <laughs> I really keep telling people you're Bill Nye, which Bill Nye crushed ass and <laughs> made fucking bank and you know all that, but I, I don't know. Is there any other final notes that you wanna you wanna hit on? Oh, I would. I the the number. Okay, here's one more thing. This this definitely applies to your audience. Would be people ask me like you know locally or whatever or, or online like, hey, I've got this Instagram account. I'm trying to get started, and you know it's a kind of focuses on tacos and how tacos are oriented on plates or whatever it is. I don't yeah. know. What advice what? do you have? And I'll be like, well, tell me about it. Like, where are you at? How many have you, posts have you done? What are you posting on? Well, I haven't started yet. And I'm like, you got to start. Just fucking start. Like, yeah, but I'm afraid. What if the content's not very good? I don't care. It's already not good. It doesn't exist. It doesn't, <laughs> it's the worst God content. God damn it. it's not there. Yeah, man. You you can't be afraid to dive in. If you already look at the video I produced in March that has 300,000 views, I cringe because it's terrible. Oh, God. It's, I actually just watched some of my older ones uh, knowing that you were coming. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if people are going to go through these. And already the ones that I produced just two months ago, I cringe at. But those videos... If you wouldn't have made them... If I wouldn't have made them... You wouldn't have 40,000 no. yet. You would be still at 10 or 5 or I whatever. I already... Even the one I made three times ago, I'm still learning and growing. And Fuck yeah. the show gets better and better. You make so many mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. You'll get so much feedback from people. And you grow on that. And that you continue makes you, to invest in your shit. You're buying, you just told me, oh, I just bought this camera. I just got this. I, I want to get this light. I'm going to borrow this. Like you're investing into your product and you want to yeah. make sure you have the best. Pro- He's talking about the slider. Like we were talking about yeah. getting electronic sliders. No one's doing that. They're not investing. They're buying the bare minimum and they're continuing to do that. But they, they just become stale. And yeah. you're trying to find already the best ways to stick out. You know, And that's well, going to solve the, so many one problems. One of the number one comments I get is people go, why doesn't this guy? Not when I'm one when I get a lot of people being jackasses because it's YouTube. Yeah. But I get a lot of people going like, why doesn't this guy have more subs? He's, this is great quality content. And they see it as like a a big show already. And you, it's that fake it till you make it. You know, if you can invest up front and put more money into it and make it a better show and put the time and effort into making it really good as opposed to just like good enough, Yeah. then do it, you know? You know what's But at the same time, don't be afraid to, to get started. I was you know? going to say, <laughs> yeah. that's very interesting because when I think about it, I, I almost got to the point the other day where I was like, oh, it'd be fun to vlog and create more tutorial videos and now I want to try to create a video every Thursday or whatever for mm-hmm. YouTube. And I'm like, at this point, I honestly don't give a fuck about any quality. I'd rather just get something out and if it's garbage, it's at least I got it out yeah. to the point where I'm like, I have an A7S II. I have a 5D Mark III. I have all this camera gear I can get access to. Right. But I would rather shoot a vlog on my phone and, and edit it because of the time it saved me yeah. and I actually created something yeah. versus where I shoot all the shit on A7S and I have to take the card out and dump it and meet it, back it up and then I have to dump yeah. all of it. And I, by that point, I'm just like so over it. Yeah. I don't have enough time to do it. I'm like, right. it's better to go shittier yeah. than not go it's at all. It's a funny thing, isn't it? But if, if I did it and I started seeing success, that's where I can allocate my time to, okay, now I, I understand worth, this is starting to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I put a little bit of time in, now I can put a little bit more, yeah, now yeah, I can yeah. put full time into it and that's what you did. Exactly. You know, yeah, you're right. the same thing. So. Because it's, it's like you got to start. Yeah. And then as, as it grows, you should be growing with it. You shouldn't stay stale. You should make it better and better and better yeah. and better. I think that's, yeah, you're right. Because it's a weird relationship there like you have this weird dichotomy of like get started but and don't worry about how shitty it is yeah but also like but you're good sure it's really good you already are good at this yeah. so you shouldn't have shitty quality content yeah. like right you made a feature documentary that's on netflix but you're <laughs> uploading that shit on an right. iphone 7 what the fuck is wrong with you i'm yeah. like i don't really give a shit though it still yeah. teaches you something like yeah it doesn't matter like all yeah. right so yeah, i fuck with that but it's always <laughs> i think it, you always have to start somewhere and progress and the more you progress the better the sh- the content's going to be the yeah. more time you're going to be able, the team you'll be you'll yeah. be able to have a team interns that, all this real shit real quick i know we're like trying to wrap up and we'll probably st- end up keep talking for four more hours but that's one of the beautiful things about uh you know as your audience grows and as your fan base grows you can start allocating things to people that are just excited to help hell yeah i have people right now in my discord channel that 
help me research and I double check my facts. They read over my scripts. Wow. They point out errors. And all that does is makes my content better. And they help. And it, it's the best thing ever because I get a, you know, I get to like throw out ideas and they can be like, no, this is the stuff that would normally end up in a YouTube comment in 10 minutes. Right. Oh, uh, you misspelled. Right, you know, right. Like, oh, you said kilometers instead of yeah, yeah. You know, whatever, you know. Um, and I have these people that are excited to help out. And they're trying to like protect you and make your brand better yeah. and all this shit. And they're just excited. It's beautiful. It's amazing. That's going to be a full, you're going to have a building where you work out of eventually. Like that's how this shit happens. Like you just grow it out and then it becomes that a full place down the road. Have you ever seen that? that yeah. Old that'd be sick. Infernary. That's all I want. It, it feels good to be back home. Yeah. I never, if I come back home, it's for a fucking wedding. It's for like three days. Yeah. I'm in and out. I feel like that's been this trip anyway already, but I was tight. I do want to, no, I don't even want to say this on, I'm not even gonna give you my motherfucking ideas, okay? My <laughs> shit's worth money, all right? I'm gonna say, this. I'll tell you when we get off this because yeah. it's tight. Um, that's it. Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut. I appreciate you coming on here. Yeah, I think some people, hopefully, people who are listening to this, hopefully, they get something out of it. I think I you have so a very interesting fucking career. If you guys have any other questions, blow them up on Instagram, everyday astronaut. Get them up to 100K followers, please. And then, um, where else can they find you? Where obviously, Every, YouTube. basically, everywhere if you look up. Everyday Astronaut, whatever platform you're on. His website's great, too. You got all your content on there. Yeah, most photos, for the most all part. Stuff. Yeah, everydayastronaut.com, um, Everyday Astronaut on YouTube, Instagram, um, Twitch, all that stuff. But the only things that suck is Snapchat and Twitter don't let you have that long of a handle, so I'm Erday Astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> Snapchat's dying anyway. It's so yeah, up. I know. Um, I'm glad I didn't push hard on that. I, I will put everything in the show notes, obviously. It's on the blog. You'll be able to find it. Um, I still figuring out my website situation to figure out how I can link that out. Cause I'd rather just say blog number two or something. Yeah, I don't know if yeah, I can. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, go to do, do that. I'll, I'll leave. I'm going to explain all this shit after this and another recording that I put on after this. So <laughs> thanks for coming, being yeah. on the shit. I love your house. I'm going to go ride my booster board back home and hopefully yeah, make it yeah. and be the weirdest guy driving around in a fucking bike helmet in <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. It's the best. I'm glad you're home. Thanks dude. Um, that's it. Yeah. Space. Bye. Everyday astronaut. Everyday astronaut. Bye. And that's a wrap with Tim Dodd, a.k.a. the Everyday Astronaut. Thank you all for listening. Make sure to follow Tim online. I've shared his links in the show notes, which you can find at blackwindowcream.com slash podcast. I've been putting some work into the podcast post. It's like a blog, and I put as much like cool info and photos and links to shit about each person that I interview. So check that out. Leave a review on iTunes and let me know what you loved about this interview. Make sure you signed up to be a Black Window Cream member. And last but not least, buy some motherfucking merch. Every sale helps me keep this alive. Subscribe to Black Window Cream. New episodes every Sunday. See you next week, you bitch! Yeah, yeah, yeah.